Hello everybody, welcome to today's video. Um, second part of uh, Waco Danish oil video. And uh, what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna talk mainly, I figured, you know, I'm gonna be applying this Danish oil here. So uh, I was gonna talk about some of the questions that were raised from my previous video, which uh, you can see up here. Uh, but so if you wanna learn how to apply Danish oil, um, you definitely want to watch that video. I'm going to answer more of questions. I'll go through some of my application here. But I'm just getting ready to do the doors on my kitchen cabinets here. Um, I chose to do um, Danish oil on everything. I like the, the look of it and the finish of it. And, uh, you know, if there's any issues, I can always reapply it at a later date, um, you know, to fix up anything, which because I'm building the cabinets, I know how to do that. So, you know, that'd be relatively easy for me to do. And, um, you know, it's, it's an easy finish to put on. Uh, today, you know, we don't have much in the way of wind, but you don't have to worry. I have the garage door open here too, off to the right here. But you don't have to worry about much in the way of uh, wind and dust in your shop. I mean, you still want a clean shop, and you, you know, you don't want to have any dirt or junk on it. And uh, I'll probably get this wiped down before I apply uh, the Danish oil. But, um, you know, it's it's a relatively simple, well, it is a, one of the simplest applications you can put on as far as finish goes. Now, um, I live in California, and uh, so California, I can't, I can't, I found out I can't get anything more than uh, a quart of this stuff at a time. Um, I had a gallon out in the shed, and I went out there, I thought, well, I got plenty of it, you know, and I went out there, and it was all, uh, it was really old stuff, and so it wasn't, uh, wasn't any good at this point, so I had to go buy new stuff, so I ended up buying three quarts, I'll probably end up getting more, and uh, one of my pet peeves about the Danish oil, I don't know about you guys, but uh, this cap sucks, um, you know, you push down, and you try to open it. And, and I can't get it. I, I can't push down. There's not enough room on this cap to, to really get a grip to push down. Some of you, you know, Herculean people out there maybe can. Uh, I always, always had to use uh, pliers and basically uh, just, you know, screw this top all up as far as uh, the way that you can get to it. Sometimes I even take that off because you can see even now, as I start doing that, uh, I still have to, it still, it still doesn't want to grab. So, if I can get this off, which I can. So, nothing a good pair of channel locks can, can help you with easily. Um, I've already shaken it up quite a bit, so you definitely want to shake it up. And I'm just going to put some in this. Uh, old seafood and shrimp salad um, container that we had. And try and get there we are get that back on but um, I had a lot of good questions asked about uh, Danish oil in my last video and so I thought I'd address a lot of them here I try to talk about some of the problems that people had and uh, what I recommend that they do now I am by no means an expert I use Danish oil a lot but I am NOT an expert on this stuff so um, you know, take it as advice, don't take it as expert, um, you know, analysis on something, because uh, it's definitely not that. But um, one, of the, one of the things that I um, got questions on is application. Now, uh, I use just these old brushes. Um, I get them at Harbor Freight, like a dozen of them, you know, relatively cheap. They're like a blue brush or a, a chip brush, I think they call them. And um, I'll use these on uh, like any of the cabinets, anything that has an inside lip like this back here. Um, I'll use this on, on them and uh, just basically, you know, just, just dip and just, just apply it just like that. Just, you know, nothing, nothing too fancy, just, just put it on there. Uh, the other way that you can um, do this is with a cloth. And uh, just soak the cloth and then get it on there and just start wiping all along there. And that's about the easiest, especially when you have something that is flat like this. Now, you want to get a good coat on there. Uh, you don't want to have it puddle, but you do, do want to get it pretty wet. Now, the other thing that, that people had asked about was um, after you apply it, how long do you, do you leave it dry for? And I think the back of the directions here, let's see, flood surface and additional 15 minutes 
absorb, allow penetration 15 minutes, reapply additional 15 minutes. So that's good, um, you know, if you put if you put a good amount on it. But you definitely don't want to let it dry out. So like if the wood um, is, is sucking it in, and I can already see uh, dry parts right over here uh, where the wood sucks it in relatively quick. So you want to keep it wet for that 15 minutes. Now, to be honest with you, I don't wait the 15 minutes, but I'm using oak and purple heart. I'm oak, <laughs> maple and purple heart. Now, if you're using oak, or um, like walnut or something that's a little bit more porous. Uh, you definitely want to flood it a little bit more. And the issue that you're gonna have after that is when you go to wipe it down now, uh, it tells you to let it um, soak in and then you go ahead and wipe it down. Now I'm doing the front first and then the back second and, and then I'll flip it back on over. But um, you want to, keep the surface wet and um, when you apply it and you let it dry, if you let it dry too much, what will happen is you get some um, spots where uh, it's not quite a good finish and you can reapply. And in other parts where if you flood it too much, you're going to get some seepage. And let's talk about that seepage a little bit here. So on stuff like maple and this purple heart, it's a pretty tight wood. Um, you don't get much in the way of seepage. So when you apply it, you don't, you know, once you apply it and you wipe it all off, uh, you're pretty good to go. Uh, you know, you don't, you don't have to worry about it later on. But I, I always come out about every 15, 20 minutes. And if I see any seepage, I, I wipe it off. Now, if you're doing something like um, walnut, which is, uh, pretty heavy duty, you know, it's, it's um, pretty open, porous, or um, something like oak, like red oak, I found that this was a problem. Um, then, then you, you have to sort of really watch it and it's going to seep through quite a bit. Now see, you see how fast I did this side here, and already this is all starting to dry here on this side. So my main concern is, of course, the front of the doors, the back of the doors. Um, you know, if they have less of a coat on, that's fine. Now, is this a good idea, this finish on cabinets or high traffic areas? Now, they tell you not to use it outside. It's a definitely an in, indoor finish. And um, you don't want to use it on areas that have a lot of... Um, foot traffic, like it tells you not to use it on floors. Something that's going to get rubbed quite a bit. And see, when I flipped over here, I got some drips on this side. So I want to make sure I get them. Um, so you don't want to use it on areas that are going to get um, a lot of abuse. Now, if not, not abuse, but a lot of uh, wear and tear. So like if you're going to keep rubbing up against it, like floors and things like that. Now on cabinets, it may not be the best idea for this because it is, while it is a somewhat durable finish, it's not as good as other finishes. But my thinking for my personal reason for using it on cabinets is that I can go back and refinish it. And um, we have uh, doorknobs and handles on all the cabinets, so uh, everything is grabbed by those when you're opening and closing the door all the time. So uh, I don't think that will have as much wear uh, as you would if you had like, let's say, uh, no pulls on it. If you, should, you had a finger uh, grip along the door where you open the door just by you know, grabbing the door. Uh, but because we do have handles on it, I'm not wor so worried about that as much. Now, as you can see, I keep going back over and I have the garage door open, so I'm not worried about a, a filter mask here. And it'd be like impossible to talk to you guys with that. But um, you know, it's, it's not a bad idea to wear a mask when you're, when you're uh, using this stuff. Uh, you don't want to breathe it in a lot. Um, i trying to think of some of the other, oh, some of the other problems that people had, uh, which one I'm supposed to be doing here, is they, um, 
after it dried and it started seeping, they would have uh, a lot of seepage. Now, you'll, when you come back, you'll see little wet spots. Like if you, if you hold down the light here and like see right here, I can see that this is pretty dry right there. So I wanna get that a little wet in here a little bit more. Um, you'll, you'll have some seepage out. And so you want to wipe that off. And you're gonna continue wiping it off until it gets tacky. Now, if you put too much on and you, you didn't keep up with it and you do get a tackiness to it, uh, you can lightly, after it dries, you can lightly send it down and put another light coat on, just wipe it right off. And that way it'll blend everything back in. Um, otherwise, you'll, you have like patches where it's shiny and then not shiny and, and you know, and it just looks kind of, kind of uh, crappy. Not really gonna like that very much. So, so on seepage, you, you wanna make sure that you, you take care of that as much as possible uh, when you can. So, you know, plan, plan a couple hours. Now, on porous material, like, like I said, on uh, oak and um, something like um, walnut, you're gonna be doing that for a couple days. I mean, that's just, you know. So my recommendation is that um, early in the morning, um, you go ahead and finish it. And then that way throughout the day, you can do stuff until you go to bed. And then by the time you go to bed, the seepage will be rather small. So the first thing you get up in the morning is go out and check it and um, you know, take care of it. But it should, it should be okay by then. But uh, after, after you've applied it, uh, you get a brand new cloth here. And you can use cheesecloth for this, wouldn't, wouldn't be a bad thing. I have a ton of these old towels that I've cut up and made into to rags. And you're gonna wipe the whole thing down. And here it's good because I'm actually looking where the light is coming in here so that I can see how much I'm wiping off here and making sure that I get the whole area pretty even as far as um, dryness, I guess you would call it, where I don't have any liquid on the surface. And right now it's looking pretty nice here. And... Um, Again, like I say, the nice thing about this is that you don't you don't have to worry so much about dust because you're you're wiping you're wiping it all down afterwards. Now you, you can get some dust if you if you just leave this alone, you don't come back and take care of it. Um, you're going to get some dust on it, and so you you want to make sure that you get it wiped down as nice as possible. Yeah, this, and what you do is you're looking for. Um, shiny parts of the door so anything that's shiny you want to wipe down because that's um, that's the finish that's coming up so right now this looks pretty good and uh, I think you'll agree with me that 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 looks nice I mean you know I, I like the way that this finish looks on this maple and uh, purple heart so um, I'm gonna move this off to the back area there start working on my shelves and my other door. I got another door here and then I'll, I'll work on the cabinet. But um, I'm trying to think of anything else. Now, if, if you do uh, have some uh, wet spots, like I said, uh, you want to lightly sand them down and then put another coat and wipe it off, which I think I said before. But if you really have a really blotchy where you just, uh, you know, let's say you applied it and you got called away and then, you know, by the time you got, came back, there's just all kinds of blotchiness. Uh, that's gonna require a little bit more sanding. But the beauty about this stuff is that you can sand it down. Let's say it's only on this part right over here, is you can sand it down and then you can apply it and blend it right into the next part. And then it's just gonna look like you did it all at the same time. And that's one of the reasons that I'm picking this for my cabinets is the cabinets that we have in there now were shot with lacquer. And uh, first off, you know, I wouldn't be able to do that. That was done by a professional painter when we built the house. Uh, I did make the cabinets for it, but uh, we had a professional painter that came in and, and did all the cabinets. You know, that lacquer has chipped and, and cracked and worn through. Wait for that truck to go by. Chipped and cracked and worn through. And um, it really just, there's no way to really finish it unless you just take the whole thing and just sand it all down. I mean, almost to bare wood and then refinish the whole thing again. And the problem with that is if they stained it, uh, then you gotta try and match the stain. Now I'm using natural wok oil here, so uh, I don't have to worry about the stain or anything like that. And um, you know, I can just 
apply this on there and I'm using the beauty of the wood. Now, it does darken the wood, it does give it a golden color and I like that color on it. And um, over time it's gonna age and it's gonna get a little bit darker. The Purple Heart's gonna get a little bit darker too, but the, you know, it'll still have the purple color to it and it'll still separate. I found that Purple Heart holds its color pretty good with Waco Danish oil on it. I have a, um, a nightstand that I did in Purple Heart with Waco Danish oil probably about 10 years ago, seven, eight, nine, ten, well, probably longer than that, you know, when, when you get older, time goes by much quicker, it seems like. But um, it's quite old, and it's still looking very purple and really nice. So uh, I like this finish. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I can tell you that uh, I'm trying to remember. Oh, uh, everybody always asks me, what can you apply over it? Um, and, you know, uh, they recommend uh, polyurethane, I believe, here. Let's see, maintenance. Yeah, polyurethane is desired. Uh, Verithane, um, interior uh, polyurethane. Um, you know, as long as, it, like, if you don't want to put lacquer on it because lacquer tends to melt what's underneath, so it can cause some bubbling and stuff. Um, I just use it just like this, but if you want a, a higher gloss finish, you can do some wipe on poly, which is another easy thing. And I also have a link there. Uh, wipe on poly, which is uh, relatively easy. And what you want to do is you want to let this dry for a good 72 hours. Uh, I think that's what they, yeah, they recommend 72 hours in the back of the can. At least 72 hours. I'd give it a week is what I would do. Um, especially if you have uh, a porous material where, you, you know, you've wiped it down. I would start that 72 hours after I was done wiping it down and no more leakage was coming up. See now, right there I can see a little bit of... Um, leakage right over in that corner where it's coming up, see? And the way that you can tell is when you look at it, it will be shiny. And uh, that's, that's how you can tell that you need to wipe it a little bit more. So I would wait, uh, I would count, you know, if you're gonna go 72 hours if you're, if you're pressed for time, I would count the time that you stop getting the leakage just to be safe and uh, not just the time that you applied on there. And uh, yeah, so a lot of people asked about that, recovering it. Uh, they asked what type of wood would it go well over? Well, you know, it, it, you can apply it to any wood. Um, I would always get a piece of the wood and uh, try it and make sure that that's what you like. Uh, they also come stained. So a lot of people asked about, you know, can you stain it first and then put the Danish oil on? And you can, but you can buy the Danish oil with the stain in it, which is just, you know, so much easier. Um, sometimes you do have to apply um, like pine and something like that with a whole bunch of knots. You have to put a sealer on there to make it so that when the stain goes on, it's nice and even. Otherwise, it'll be real dark in certain areas. And there's all kinds of videos about how to apply stain on poor stuff like that. Walnut can happen too, but walnut's pretty dark. I don't know how you could stain that really. Um, but if you're doing like pine, like you want to use pine, uh, you know, because it's inexpensive, easy to sand, really, really easy to sand compared to this stuff. And um, you want to apply a stain. Uh, I'd recommend this and I would check into it and I'd try a piece with a, with a big knot in it. I would try that piece first, see how that stain reacts to that knot, if it does react to it. And if it does, then I would try a sealer over it. Uh, you know, again, a separate piece. Try a sealer over it and then try putting a stain on and see which one you like better. And again, it's all personal choice. Um, I like this stuff. I like wipe on poly because it's easy to apply. It's easy to apply in the shop. Uh, it doesn't take much. Um, oh, and one other thing is that people ask me about the rags here. Um, so this is a combustible material. Glad I thought about this. And uh, so you don't want the rag to be sitting there like this as it dries out because what's going to do is, is where it's combined here, it's going to heat up. It's going to be hotter and hotter and hotter. So if you lay out the rag like this and let it dry, it's not gonna get as hot. And it's not gonna, you know, most likely it's not gonna combust. The other thing you do is you can throw it in a, in a vat of water, you know, and let it sit in there for a few days. Um, I just generally just spread them out and not had an issue with it. Um, but it doesn't matter what you have. If you, uh, people are asking if you use paper towels, do you start to spread it out? Yes, paper towels especially would ignite much faster than than the material, I think, but uh, you know, I'm not a uh, pyromaniac that knows you know the flash point of everything. So um, you could research that. But uh, I, you know, once once you uh, spread it out, you're good. Uh, something like this, you can always pour it back in the container. Uh, you can just put, uh, you know, I'm going to be, I'll use this all up here, so I'm not worried about that. But you can always just use the lid that snaps back onto these, um, you know, like butter cups or whatever whatever it is that you have. You can use that.
And I think, that, I, I think that's it. So hopefully I've covered all of the questions, but uh, please do. I enjoy you guys leaving comments below and any questions that you have, leave them. You can hear my dogs, they're barking because we have painters next door actually. But leave any questions below. Uh, I, I try to answer all of them. I, I don't you know, get to them right away. Sometimes I'm out of town, but uh, I do try to get to them as quickly as I can. I do enjoy your questions. It helps me learn and hopefully it helps you learn. And some of your questions I had to research a little bit to make sure that what I'm telling you is correct because I don't want to tell you the wrong thing. Um, but I can you know, give you my experience on this stuff and uh, you know, I, really, I really like it. Uh, yeah, this one part right over there just keeps oozing but uh, i really i really love this stuff and um i like using it on most of my projects now it does have a smell to it uh which you have to get used to and uh, that's the other thing i should mention is that uh, my shop is in my garage and uh, so is our laundry our you know and you've probably seen that in other videos so uh, I have to do this on a day that we're not doing laundry because you don't want that smell in your clothes and it does it does uh, permeate and stuff so um I'll get this all done today and let it dry for a day or two and then we'll do laundry uh, after that, you know, so just a little, little tip there. But it does have a smell to it. And once you get it all in the house, you do have that smell. You're gonna have it for a little while, um, you know, until it, it just uh, wanes off, I guess, or uh, dissipates in the air and totally cures. And that's one of the reasons I'm, I'm finishing all these now because as I build them, if I finish them, uh, they're gonna cure and they're not gonna, they're not gonna have that whole smell when all the cabinets go in at one time and of course i will show you all the cabinets uh you know i have uh, i have four more cabinets to build after this one i have a one two three yeah four more cabinets to build and then we start ripping out the the kitchen and i'll i'll take you along on that journey too and let you see the progress there and how that's working out but uh again i appreciate all of your questions i appreciate all of your subscribers uh, please do like and subscribe I appreciate everybody that's watched this video to the end. You guys are troopers, uh, great people. And uh, leave any questions or comments you like right below. I always appreciate them. Until next time, all of you take care out there. And hopefully you'll be around for my next video. Thanks for watching this one. Take care.